Today I will be analyzing a song by my favorite vocalist, Darren Hayes. I will be analyzing the song Unlovable. It's a strikingly candid text and therefore I hope I will be able to approach it with care. From the very first seconds of this track, I get an association as if I'm locked in some kind of icy industrial refrigerator and spotlights are shining on me. You know, like during an interrogation when a very, very bright, very cold white light shines in your face and you feel completely helpless. That's exactly the association these synthy sounds that start the song evoke in me. The first lines go like this. Are my lips unkissable? Are my eyes unlookable? Is my skin untouchable? Am I unlovable? And these are terrifying lines in terms of their emotional impact. As if this white light piercing like a laser is a feeling of shame penetrating every cell of the body. I'm bad. It's impossible to love me. That's the kind of feeling these first lines evoke in me as a compassionate listener. And here I think about what might be the most important thing in life for us humans, at least in the first year of life. It's acceptance. Warm, accepting hands. Eyes filled with loving curiosity. Interest in us. Physical contact. When we're held to mama's chest, when the lock of mother's hair touches the baby's cheek as she feeds them, when we're loved. And this is an absolutely healthy human need. In the first year of life, it should be satisfied by the mother or the most significant caring adults. It's necessary for physical survival. And in the song, we already feel in the first four lines a huge question mark about this deep sense of acceptance. After all, if a child doesn't receive enough of this acceptance and even admiration in childhood, then an unhealing, open wound forms in place of this healthy need. And then, as adults, we go out into life and out of all the people around us, our subconscious unerringly recognizes and brings closer to us those who in some mystical way remind us of our wound. It's as if the wound activates to the sound of this person's voice or maybe to the glint of light in their eyes or, or their scent. It makes us strive towards this person. We want to give them the keys to our soul, transfer responsibility for our life, fill the emptiness we feel inside. Having a deep need for intimacy is normal. It seems to me that there is a fundamental error in striving to be completely independent. This opinion that if you need another person, you're somehow weak. No. We all need each other to varying degrees, depend on each other. Humans are designed this way. I'm not talking about unhealthy dependency now. That's a different topic. But we want to be seen, accepted, and hopefully loved. And here, in the very first lines of the text, we, or the character in the song, comes to the realization that there is and was no acceptance and love in the current relationship. And it raises, at least in me, as a sympathetic listener, a wave of shame. And shame is a very difficult feeling to process. It's self-directed rejection, as if there is something incurably bad in me. I'm bad. And that shame raises a second wave of feeling of even greater self-deprecation. I'm a fool for believing in you. I'm a fool for believing that you loved me or that I can be loved at all. The main tone of mood in the first verse is cynicism. Cynicism is like acid corroding the soul. Faith, 
relationships, warm memories, turning everything into dust. And then, like a house of cards, the character's entire support system collapses. Not only did you not love me, but you made me feel my father didn't love me and mother abandoned me and the act of love is empty. The character who says these words, it seems to me, is obviously in a stage of anger. And anger, for me, is a clear sign that our expectations did not match the real state of affairs. And when we start to feel intense anger, it makes sense to ask ourselves, what am I not admitting to myself right now? What have I been turning a blind eye to? And the second verse answers this question. The character gave his partner all the love and support that he dreamed of receiving himself. At the same time, he apparently refused to notice for too long that only crumbs were falling to him from this festive table. And here, several more questions arise. How much Does a person accept and value themselves in the first place if they continue to be in a relationship in which, by their own feelings, they only invest and invest and are forced to beg for the partner's attention? And who did our character love anyway? A real person or a representation of them created in their own imagination? Could this other person quench the deep deficit of love and acceptance? Is it even possible, having this open wound inside, to enter into mature, healthy relationships? I don't have definitive answers to these questions, but it seems logical to me to assume that every person has some wounded, very young parts of themselves, and it may well be that it's impossible to heal them completely once and for all. And we have an important mission. Every time these chronic negative patterns get hooked by some external current event and appear on the surface of consciousness, our mission is to give them space and compassion. Like this. Ah, here you are again, my old friend, my wounded part. Welcome. We can become curious. What's there? Anxiety? Self-criticism? shame. Come in. We can explore where we feel the state of most strongly in the body. We can ask it to manifest itself through a somatic movement. We can turn our gentle curiosity to it, explore it, give it a place to catch its breath in our inner sanctuary, in a space that is wider and deeper which is connected to both this pain and joy and our ancestors and all the trees and birds and all our friends and teachers. We can ask this part in ourselves, teach me, what do you need? And listen to the answers and then start trying out new ways of expressing it and how we can give this part what it's asking for. I think this is the very acceptance and compassion that we can give ourselves each time when the need arises again and again. And then, from the state of our own completeness, we can begin to take a step towards another person, opening our hearts to them, revealing our vulnerability. But doing this consciously, from the height of our life experience and understanding that we can let this particular person into our closest space and we can survive and come to terms with whatever might follow because we can hold ourselves. This is the complex analysis I came up with today. If even one thought turns out to be useful for you, I consider my task fulfilled. And if you decide to share your thoughts in the comments, I'll be very glad. Bye-bye for now. I wish you the very best.